friends you're back and this time we are going to discuss two another important aspects of the control walls which are normally used as the final control elements in any closed loop specifically in terms of the feedback controls as we had studied in the last sessions so we will first define the term cv what is cv of a wall as you can say it's C stands for coefficient, V stands for wall. Which wall coefficient? It's the wall flow coefficient, CV. It's, it's a wall's capacity for the liquid or in some cases for the gases to flow through it. And it's technically defined as the volume of water. Why water? Because you will see, we know the specific density of water, viscosity of water, they are all known. And that also at 16 degree Fahrenheit. It's an old definition, but still continuing with that 16 degree Fahrenheit. And that also, the flow should be in US gallon, US gallon per minute, per minute. So these are the things you have to keep in mind. Number one, we are taking water, so that defines the density. Number two, we had said the temperature because the density may also vary with respect to uh, temperature. So we fix the temperature also. We fix the temp density also. And we have to take the flow. The flow units should be in US gallon per minute. US gallon per minute. And that flow, that flow which produces a pressure drop of 1 PSI across the wall. 1 PSI across the wall is known as the flow coefficient of the wall. Normally, when we say what is the CV of a 2-inch wall or 3-inch wall, if it is not mentioned that what should be the percentage opening, in that case, the CV is taken. If it is not mentioned, then it is assumed that when the valve is fully open, so that when the valve is fully open is added in case it's not mentioned. Otherwise, you have CV of the wall in terms of the flow that is taking place in US gallon per minute. Flow of what? Flow of water. How much flow? So at the pressure drop across the wall is 1 PSI. It can be at the 10% of opening. It can be at the 20% of the opening or the 30% of the opening. So as such, we can even uh, plot the value of CV with respect to the opening of the wall. This is what we do actually when we go in for the valve pressure drop is fixed at 1 PSI. And then we see that over here at 1 PSI drop, we see the value is taken as the valve flow coefficient or CV of a valve. That is what is the definition of that. Now, we see in simpler terms, the larger the opening in a wall, the larger is the CV. It's, it's a common sense. As the wall opening in the increases, as the valve is opening, its, it's CV also increases until the valve is fully open. When it reaches its highest possible CV or its 100% opening, you have the maximum CV over there. Friends, this is what we had studied in the last session. The flow is given by Kfx under root of delta P by rho. And this K into Fx, this thing is called Cv. Because ultimately, if you see Cv, if you put this thing as Cv, this value of Cv is replaced by this term x Fx. We have the Cv. The flow in gallon per minute for water when taking delta P in terms with that also as equal to 1. Specific gravity of water is also taken as 1. So in that case, GPM will be equal to CV. This is what we get as the definition of the CV coming from here. I think it's all very clear about the CV part. This is, for example, a wall. And here you see once again the volume of water at 60 degree Fahrenheit that will flow through a wall per minute when the pressure drop is 1 PSI. You can measure the pressure drop of 1 PSI with the volume over here in this particular case as it's happening. For this wall, this CV comes out to be 13. It means that 13 gallon of water will flow 
per minute through this wall at this opening when it's going to produce a pressure drop of 1 psi. Friends, as I said that with the opening of the wall, the CV of the wall is going to change at 10%, 20%. This is what I was mentioning. This is for a 2-inch wall in the lower curve and uh, you have a 3-inch wall in the upper curve. Now, after having discussed the CV part, we now come to what are the installed characteristics of wall. What do you mean by installed characteristics of wall? You have inherent characteristics and then you have installed characteristics. Whatsoever you had studied so far were the inherent characteristics. And in case of inherent characteristics, we had seen that the pressure drop across the wall is supposed to be constant. Now this pressure drop across the wall is constant only when you have strict laboratory conditions where you actually maintain the pressure drop across the wall to measure the characteristics. Otherwise, under normal conditions, under, under industrial conditions, this pressure normally is not normally is not constant. What do we see over here? We see that you have a linear characteristics and this seems to be the ideal one but I told you my dear friends that linear wall is rarely used. What we go in for is an equal percentage of wall. Why do we go in for equal percentage of wall? Because we see that for the linear wall this condition needs to be fulfilled. This condition needs to be fulfilled. But when you install it, when you install any wall in any process and as you increase the flow rate, as you increase the flow rate, this pressure decreases. This pressure decreases. It's a very common phenomena known to us that as the flow rate increases, the, the pressure drop is there. And that's what happens in most of the cases. As the flow rate increases, this delta P, it actually goes down. It actually goes down. So this, what is straight, what is looking straight like that, when you install it, the inherent characteristics of this wall, when you are practically doing it and going in for this kind of installation, then actually the installed characteristics will not be the same. Rather, they will also start dipping down and down and down and down and down. They will come over here because of the fact that you have this delta P is not constant. It's coming down. So what's the way out? We don't want this thing to come down and down and down we need this dip which is coming over here on account of this delta p coming down that we need to compensate for that's what we're going in in this case it's the linear characteristics which are in the shown over here they are the inherent characteristics but the installed characteristics on account of this pressure dip that comes out to be something like this this is what we don't want. That is the main reason we do not go in for linear. For the equal percentage valve. And what happens in case of equal percentage of valve is that this equal percentage valve, the inherent characteristics are like this. But because of the dip, the actual characteristics, the installed characteristics, they are somewhat very close to the linear one. And this is the reason we go in for equal percentage of the valve. Uh, of a weak percentage characteristic valve is used in industry so that ultimately the effectively the installed characteristics along with that delta p becoming lesser and lesser with increase in flow rate that is almost almost linear so this is the reason we say that we have equal percentage of valve is preferred over the linear one because the linear is not actually linear and the inherent one characteristics of equal percentage of valve they are actually more like linear and that's the reason we go in for the installed characteristics of the wall instead of the inherent characteristics of the wall. So as we see in the next slide, a practical example of this is given over here. Okay, friends, you have a supply tank and then there's a pump which is producing some pressure head. You have a control valve. It is going to, let us say, some heat exchanger and it's going to the product tank. So as the flow increases, as the flow increases, the pressure drop across this wall 
that also decreases as such you see because of that the pressure over here becomes lesser and lesser because it's the flow flow of uh, entire flow is taking place over here so the inherent characteristics of the equal percentage of wall actually results in an install its installed characteristics are almost linear because we see that as the flow increases the pressure drop is there and so whatsoever was the pressure drop initially that decreases because of the flow rate and that's why the installed characteristics are more or less linear more or less linear that's the reason you go in for equal percentage of wall so this is uh, the idea is to uh, give you two things in this number one what is the difference between installed characteristics and inherent characteristics in industry we use installed characteristics in lab while making the trick on it we use inherent characteristics and second that why is equal percentage wall preferred over the linear wall because the installed characteristics of equal percentage wall are almost linear that's the reason we go in for equal percentage of wall instead of a linear wall i think this should suffice as far as this part of the wall wall is concerned of course we will discuss various types of walls you have globe walls and ball walls and needle walls and pinch walls and butterfly walls and what not gate walls so on and so forth that will be discussed in in the next session but i think so far you are very very clear about what is cv of a wall what are the installed characteristics of a wall how are the installed characteristics of the wall different from inherent characteristics of the wall why do we go in for equal percentage wall instead of linear it's very clear all these things are clear to you in not you can always go back and uh, have a look at this video once again i hope you have understood the basic concepts and the basic terminology why i am telling you about this is because uh, this is one of the favorite questions of all the companies which come for the placement over here they will going to ask about do you know what is cv of a wall and then you should not scratch your head you should immediately come up with the answer do you know what are inherent characteristics do you know what are installed characteristics why do we go in for equal percentage of all why why the linear thing is not preferred so all these questions you need to know at the tip of your fingers to answer these all these things i think you are now fully prepared and the concept of funda is now totally clear, clear to you friends in case you still have any doubts or queries in case you want to share something with me you can always contact me through zoom calls or through the whatsapp or telephone or face to face interactions as the case may be i thank you for being with me once again i wish you a very safe stay and enjoy learning bye bye